Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm from Amanda Crochets and in today's video I want to show you how to make this falling leaves scarf. This is very similar to my falling leaves blanket that I've made in the past and is a very fun and easy pattern to make. This pattern is made using four different colors to get that fall effect. This scarf measures 7 inches wide by 69 inches long, however you can always customize this to make it as long or as short as you would like. So let's get started on today's tutorial to make the falling leaves scarf. Okay, so for today's tutorial you're going to need one skein of four different colors. You can use the same colors that I used here or you can use the colors of your choice. The yarn I'm using is all Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. And this is a 7 ounce, 199 gram, 355 yard, or 325 meter skein. It is 100% acrylic. It is considered a number 4 medium worsted weight yarn, and it is machine washable and dryable. The recommended hook size is a US I9 or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. So this first color I'm using is Cranberry. Next is Sun Gold. Next is Burnt Pumpkin. And last but not least, we have Brown. So you're going to need four different colors, one skein of each. And you're also going to need a size J 6 millimeter crochet hook. So I'm going to be bumping up my crochet hook one just based off the stitch and personal preference. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to be starting with that cranberry color today. And for this stitch pattern, you're going to need to make a chain of 27. If you want to make your scarf wider or more narrow, you just want to make your scarf in a multiple of three. So you're going to take three times whatever number that you would like and then that is going to be your chain multiple. So I'm just going to be doing nine times three which is a total of 27. So whatever you desire that's going to be your chain. So go ahead and make your chain of 27 so that loop on your hook does not count. You're going to yarn over your hook and pull through. That's one, two, three, four, five. Continue until you have a total of 27 chains or your multiple of three. Okay, once we have our 27 chains or our multiple of three, we can begin working on the scarf. Working in the third chain from your hook, you're going to make one half double crochet and one double crochet into that same stitch. So again, that loop on your hook does not count. You're going to count three chains, one, two, and three. And in that third chain, you're going to yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that is your half double crochet. You're going to make a double crochet into that same chain space. So yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that same chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now, if you are a true beginner and you have difficulties keeping your ends straight, I highly recommend getting a stitch marker. So right here is your double crochet. Next to it is your half double crochet made and you have your skipped chain right here. So you're going to go to that next chain which is going to be right here. So again you have your half double crochet right here and to, that, to the right you're going to have that chain this is where you're going to insert your stitch marker and that is going to help you recognize the first and last stitch of each of your rows. So right here, insert your stitch marker. Okay, now we're going to begin our repeat. So we're going to skip two chains 
and in the next chain we're going to make a single crochet half double crochet and double crochet all into that chain space and this is called the sedge stitch this is one of my favorite stitches and I have used it in so many different patterns whether it's a scarf dishcloth or blanket skip two chains one and two and in the chain after that insert your hook yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, and that is your single crochet. Make a half double crochet into that same chain, and a double crochet in that same chain as well. Okay, so now you're just gonna repeat this all the way across until you have three chains left. So you're going to skip two chains, one and two, and in the chain after that, make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet all into that same chain space. I'll show you one more time. Skip the next two chains, one and two, and in the chain after that, make a single crochet, half double crochet and double crochet. Repeat that across until you have a total of three chains remaining and I'll show you how to end row one and move on to row two. Okay, so I'm over at the end of my row and I have three chains remaining. I'm going to skip two chains. In that very last chain, I'm going to go ahead and make a single crochet. And then you're going to insert your stitch marker into the top of that single crochet stitch. So here's what your first row is going to look like. So we're going to go ahead and move on to row two. So we're going to go ahead and chain one and turn. Now when you're using your stitch markers, that chain one is going to count as a single crochet. So move your stitch marker up into that chain one, which is right here. We're going to make a half double crochet and double crochet into that very first stitch. So again, that chain one counts as your single crochet in that very first stitch, which is going to be right here. Insert your hook and make a half double crochet and double crochet right into that very first space. You're going to skip two stitches and you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet into that next stitch. So when you look at your stitches, you have your double crochet right here, you have your half double crochet, and finally your single crochet. You are always going to be working into the single crochet from the previous row. So skip the next two stitches. And in the stitch after that, work a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet, all into that same stitch. And you're going to repeat this all the way across. So one more time, you're going to skip the next two stitches. And in the stitch after that, you're going to make a single crochet double half double crochet and double crochet. You're going to repeat this all the way across until you have three stitches remaining. Once you get to that end of your row, I will show you how to end row two and move on to row three. Okay, so I'm over at the end of row two and I have three stitches remaining. I'm going to skip two, one and two, and in that very last stitch which is going to be the skipped stitch then you're going to go ahead and insert your hook into that last stitch and again it might be a little bit tricky and you're going to make a single crochet in the very last stitch or that skipped chain 
And that is what two rows looks like. So when you use the said stitch, your stitches are going to be offset a little bit. So you can see right here, this is your first row, and then your second row is slightly off to the side. And it just creates this wonderful texture. So for the remainder of the pattern, you're just going to go ahead and repeat row two. So you're going to chain one and turn. Again, that chain one counts as your first stitch or your single crochet stitch. You're going to make a half double crochet and double crochet into that very first stitch. You're going to skip two stitches and in the stitch after that, you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. And you're going to repeat that all the way across. So I had four rows of each color. So I'm going to go ahead and make four rows of this cranberry color. And then I will show you how to change colors. The next color is going to be sun gold. Okay, so I'm over at the end of row four, and I'm going to be doing a color change. So I'm going to skip the two stitches, and in that very last stitch, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to start my single crochet. So I'm going to stop right here, and instead of yarning over with that cranberry color, we're going to yarn over with the new color. Now, if you have a different method of joining and changing colors, you can definitely do that. This is just the way that I do it. So you're going to end right here and you're going to get your scissors and you're going to cut a short tail just like this to weave in later. You're going to get your new color which is going to be that sun gold color. You're going to leave a little bit of a tail and then lay that new color right over your hook and you're going to pull through with that new color. And then I just like to get the ends and pull them a little bit to tighten that. And then you're good to go for the pattern. So one more time, you're going to chain one and turn, and you're going to continue the pattern as normal. So in that very first stitch, you're gonna make a half double crochet and a double crochet. Skip two stitches and make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet into that next stitch. Skip the next two stitches and in the stitch after that make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. So when you make your color changes you're going to do the exact same thing for the remainder of the pattern. You're going to have four rows of each color so after you have sun gold, you're going to switch over to the burnt pumpkin. And then you're going to repeat the color sequence twice before you switch over to the brown. So what I mean by that is you're going to have four rows of cranberry, four rows of sun gold, then burnt pumpkin. You're going to go back to cranberry, sun gold, burnt pumpkin. Then you're going to do cranberry and brown. So you're going to repeat the color sequence five times, meaning you're going to have a total of five brown striped sections. So let me get the scarf and show you what I mean. Okay, so we started with the red or the cranberry. Then we went over to sun gold and then the burnt pumpkin. And then we repeated those three colors again. So cranberry, sun gold, and burnt pumpkin and then we switched it up a little bit by doing the cranberry brown and then we went back to that color sequence of the three colors that we did twice in a row and then again that brown section so you're just going to repeat this over and over again the color sequence you're going to have five brown striped sections and then you're going to have a total of 188 rows so what I did to keep my scarf in balance is after my fifth brown row 
or brown section. So you have the four brown rows. I went ahead and did the cranberry, sun gold, and burnt pumpkin twice in order to match the beginning of my scarf. So here's the top of my scarf. Here's that brown section. You did those three colors twice and then to end that scarf with the cranberry color to match the beginning of your pattern. So again, this is made using the sedge stitch and I understand that there's going to be a lot of color changes. If you're like me and don't really like to weave in ends a whole lot, I highly recommend weaving your ends in every so often. So what I usually did for this scarf was every time I hit a brown section, then I would weave in all my ends up into that section. So it made it a little bit easier to do that throughout the project instead of weaving in all those ends at the very end. Another good thing about using all the different colors is when you, after you change colors, all of your ends are going to be on the one side of your scarf and this is because we're making each row four rows long before the color change. So that's another thing that I liked about this is that all the ends are on one end of your scarf. So thank you so much for joining me today and learning how to make the falling leaf scarf. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me. And as always, happy crocheting. Bye.